solving simultaneous equations. Solve these simultaneous equations. One method for solving simultaneous equations is called by elimination. That means to say that we need to remove either x or y and that's why we called it eliminate. Now to do that you need to manipulate these two equations so either both of these numbers are the same number or both of these numbers are the same number. Sometimes there's an advantage in which you choose. Let's have a look at this. Either I want this to read 18x and this 18x because 9 goes into 18 and 6 goes into 18 or I want this to read 10y and this to read 10y so they both have the same number. In this particular quest question there's no advantage in either of those starting points. I'm just going to choose to make these both into 18s because. Always label this to show the examiner exactly what you're thinking. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to take hold of equation 1 and I'm going to double it. I'm going to multiply each part of equation 1 by 2. 9x times 2 minus 2y times 2 31 times 2 I've multiplied throughout by 2 and now I'm going to take hold of equation 2 and multiply each part of it by 3 3 6x's is 18 3 minus 5's is minus 15 3 28's well, it is a calculator paper. So if you want to check don't be shy. Nobody's going to know that you can't do it in your head. There's no reason why you should. Now this is a stage where we have to be really, really careful. We make either the number in front of the x the same, or the number in front of the y the same. As I said, I could have chosen to make those tens by multiplying by 5 throughout, and multiply by 2 throughout. It doesn't actually matter. This is the bit that's going to be really mattering. I either add, or I subtract these two lines. Now just logically think about it. If you add these two lines together, you will get 36x there. And the whole object would have been wasted because the x's have not disappeared if you do that. So it's pure logic to appreciate that in this particular situation you need to subtract. In other words, 18x minus 18x is nothing. Once you've made the two numbers the same, you either add or subtract, but you do have to think carefully. Is it add or is it subtract? There's no doubt at all, when it's subtract, you have to be so careful. What do you think of this? 18x minus 18x, naught. Minus 4y minus minus 15y is plus 11y. Are you happy with that? Minus 4y minus minus that 15y is actually minus 4y plus 15y, which will give you plus 11y. 62 minus 84. Now it is a calculator paper, so if you did 62 minus 84, the calculator would get you a minus 22. But using a calculator to do that part, too sure about that. If 11y is minus 22, then y itself is minus 2. 
Once you've found out one of the two values, you substitute it back into either of these original equations to work out the corresponding other letter. It shouldn't matter which equation you use, but tell the examiner what you're doing. I'm going to substitute, subs will do, into equation, as I say, it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to substitute into equation 1. So I look at equation 1 and say 9x minus 2y. Now again, minuses are going to cause some people problems. Minus 2y means minus 2 minus 2's. Minus 2 times minus 2, which is actually plus 4, equals 31. Subtracting 4, because that says plus 4, subtracting 4 from that gives you 27. And if 9x is 27, x itself is 3. Now in this exam you do expect your answers to turn out to be whole numbers, or maybe halves, but not really any horrible decimals. I suggest if you get a horrible decimal, you've gone wrong somewhere. Now there's going to be four marks for this. One mark for working out there, one mark for answer, one mark for substitution, one mark for answer. Solving simultaneous equations. Number 19. This is an enlargement question. Sometimes it's worth reconsidering the diagram and considering it as two separate triangles. A big one and a small one. And they've been superimposed. That one's been put on top of that one. So the large triangle is V, U, S and the small triangle is W, T, S. Now whether you work with the diagram like this or like that is up to you. Let's go through it. V, U is 13.5. That's 13.5. S, T is 6. T, U is 9. That part is 9. S, W is 8. Now the only difference between these two diagrams is on this diagram I'll have an 8 there and a 6 there, exactly the same. On this diagram I'll have a 13.5 there, but here I will have 15. And that is very important. When you look at this enlargement question, you need to consider 6 being large to 15 not 6 being enlarged to 9. That will go completely wrong. So this is a safety diagram if you like, making sure you appreciate the whole of this line is 15. Okay. Now you can do this by working out the scale factor of enlargement. I prefer to do these in ratio. Let me show you what I mean. It says calculate the length of WT. Now WT is in the small triangle. This is its corresponding side in the big triangle. So put WT over 13.5. That is the ratio of the sides between the small and big triangle. And that equals the ratio between the 6 and the 15. This is where some people are going to go wrong because they're going to go 6 and 9. Do you see what I mean? The ratio of enlargement is WT to 13.5 is equal to 6 to 15. Now if you write it down like that, then WT is going to be 6 over 15 multiplied by 13.5. That will work out the answer. If you type that into a calculator, 
and the answer comes to 5.4 centimeters. Working out answer units. Let's see what we've got there. Well, there's actually one mark for you working out whether you use scale factor or not. And if you use scale factor, then in fact that's what you should have, 6015. Cancels, you could have threes into that, threes into that. You could have two-fifths. That's part A.